Well, hello and good morning. Welcome back, everybody. Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. Uh, today is uh, <clears throat> day uh, 17 of the 10,000 swing challenge. Uh, we'll be over 8,000 reps in our workout today, which is nice. Uh, you know, it's good to see that I'm, I mean, there's really what, uh, there's three or four more workouts. Uh, to, I, I can't decide if I should do 750 on one day and just knock it dead or do, you know, 500 and then do the 250. Um, because of my, how I'm feeling, which isn't very good, uh, frankly. Oh, I'm better, miles better. But, uh, you know, and again, another rough night. Uh, you know, I got home from uh, doing some things just all I want to do is sleep. So that is, you know, that is the truth of this thing called Omicron or whatever variant that I had. Um, it just makes you, it gets you tired. And uh, I'm doing my best. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not on the fat loss boost anymore, so that's good. Uh, yesterday I was able to get a fair amount of oatmeal back in my system and had a delicious uh, uh, hot egg soup. It's either called, I, when I was young it was called pho, but I guess it's pho. Uh, it was really good. Uh, Thomas made that, so the dinner was great. But I was exhausted. I probably slept another 12-hour night, uh, which is just weird. So I'm back. Uh, uh, 10,000 swings. Uh, we, have some, we have some, we have a dog here. Uh, we have some uh, uh, friends from Norway, uh, India, a whole bunch of, on the Instagram feed. Um, I'm going to use a 20K bell because... As I say every morning, I'm 65, and that's what I would recommend for a 65-year-old, especially a 65-year-old who doesn't want to do the 10,000 swing challenge. And uh, do we have anybody who's 65 who doesn't want to do this challenge? Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> uh, I do it to support some of my friends online. Uh, reminder, at the university, Dan John University, uh, we're coming to the end of this sale. So if you're on Instagram, I'm pretty sure it still works now. But uh, New Year, one word. And then you get the site for 29 bucks for three months, which is great. And then you can also take the goal achievement course for 15 bucks. And as I say every morning, I mean, and I mean, people make millions of goals, but they don't achieve them. And it's very simple to, to make goals. You just take out a piece of paper and you write down a bunch of random things. But those aren't goals. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess they are. They're, they're not. I mean, unless you take those solid steps toward achieving them, they're just, they're just uh, you know, letters on a piece of paper. And there's nothing wrong with that either. It's nice to dream. Uh, I often dream at night of me flying. I don't seem to be able to do it in real life. But that doesn't mean I'm done. Okay, so let's get started. <coughs> I think this is an okay view for there. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's get going. Oh. oh. Uh, had a friend of mine look back at some of the older videos and they said something funny that uh, you can clearly see that when I start <laughs> every day that I that I truly do warm up as I go through <laughs> I start off a little you can see it and I guess I'm very stiff in the first few rounds So on Instagram, somebody wrote that goals are the tangible expressions of our values. Uh, there's probably, I used to teach ethics. And in ethics, you spend a lot of time talking about the word value. You know, they, these are things you value. Here in the United States, you have to be careful. <laughs> because the word value is such a corporate term, capitalistic term, you know. 
there's stores, you know, value giant, and, you know, uh, a value uh, slides more over to valuable here in the United States than the more traditional. But I, I certainly agree if that when I work with people, uh, I wasn't disagreeing with you, uh, when I work with people who uh, value their, the way they look and how they feel, tend to be, tend to be uh, a little bit closer to their, uh, their body composition goals. But having said that, I don't think it's as easy as it was 50 years, 60 years ago to have body composition goals in the United States. I think um, the fact that the federal government subsidizes uh, milk, soy, wheat, corn, and those foods are everywhere that we have. You know, we have people literally in laboratories making foods that bypass human satiation. Uh, you know, it's funny, they're trying to come up to a, with a pill that will mimic leptin. And it's funny because here's we're going to try to get a pill to mimic leptin in the, the food researchers, which is fine. It's their job. I have no issue with it. Are trying to find ways to uh, fake your leptin out. So, I mean, to me, it might be just easier just to, you know, get rid, get rid of these guys and this will take care of itself. Uh, wrong poster. He is not white, but training over and over, but the warm-up makes me sweat a little. Should I do less? There's nothing wrong with And I, I, I don't know. I, I would have to be there to see. I mean, if the warm-up is so hard that it destroys the workout, you just change to what I've always said. The warm-up is the workout. When I work with younger athletes, I always make the warm-up an extended, long period. And the workout is actually quite short and, and more fun for them. And so when I say this is the workout, they instantly forget the fact that we've done every fundamental human movement in the warm up. We've tumbled, we've done kettlebells, we've done barbells, we've done mobility, you know, all kinds of things. And now, now we're going to warm up. I want you to do two sets of five in the bench press. Yay! Two sets of five in the clean. Yay! <laughs> Boy, huh? Everything is sore. Everything is sore today. Well, good morning. Thanks for being here, folks. Hi. Here we go. Uh, so. So two completely different questions. Uh, the first off, can you do kettlebell cleans and snatches and easy strength? Try to make it work. Uh, for the clean, the double clean actually works okay. Uh, double kettlebell cleans, you know, three sets of three, five set, uh, two sets of five, actually works pretty good. And if you decide to do kettlebell clean followed by front squat, uh, you know, do those two together. You, you can get a, you know, in a, in a 40 day period, uh, that, that movement will make, will do some wonderful things for you. Uh, this one person has asked me about an, an article. This, I, this article doesn't make sense. I, I don't know the article. So, um, I've published, I mean, I've published articles on Beowulf, King Arthur, Utah 4 H clubs, uh, Middle East. Uh, teaching religious studies uh, from a Middle Eastern perspective, 
uh, catchy titles like Easy Strength for Fat Loss Through Olympic Lifting. And I've written, I think I've published a sneaking up on a thousand articles, uh, like newspaper column size articles. So 520 religious studies articles and probably that many, if not more, in strength. So I, I don't always know what you're referencing. Uh, what's my favorite brand of coffee? Uh, a Folgers. We must have a new person here. Um, yeah, I think we do. Adam, so my favorite uh, brand is, uh, I start my day with Folgers because the best part of waking up is Folgers in my cup. Uh, Sam, you must be new. Uh, uh, the questions, they're asking about things like rest periods and stuff. Sam, you're literally watching me live do this. You're literally watching me live. L-I-V-E. Um, even if I had a watch on, it would be. So, yeah, what we, I do the up to thing. I do it. So, today I'm going to get up to five. I'm going to get to 520. It doesn't matter how I get there. Having said that, I'm very sore today. My grip is gone. Uh, I'm sore. Um, I did a lot of squats on Monday, and I'm sore. Um, so, and then yesterday with Pat Flynn, we did it together yesterday, and we were cr we were crunching out sets of 30, 35, very fast, and I just just woke up sore. And <clears throat> this COVID thing, <clears throat> every day it's like ah, it's behind me, and it's like about halfway through the day. Well, yeah, it was behind me for the first few hours, but. Last yesterday, it caught up to me again. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, before we move on, people, because I write a lot of articles, very often the editor of a book or a magazine will say, I need an article about this. So I'll do a few things and I'll write a, an article and then they'll ask for a workout to go along with the article. And I'll write a workout to go along with it based on a few experiences. And then, of course, that sits in stone forever. People ask me about it years later. Huh? I don't remember. <laughs> or, you know, this is something I've discovered. You know, when people train with me, what they talk, thought was from an article really important, they realized it's just a toss away. It's just a little thing. And they missed the whole real vision of the workouts. Like, I don't think people realize you know, when I train people, how much I emphasize the front squat. I talk about it all the time, but it's only when you're training with me that you see how much emphasis I put on that and snatch for my athletes. But I mean, the workout says three sets of three front squat, and that's all it says. And there's a whole bunch of warm up things and original strength, and you get caught up in all that. <laughs> but the workout is three sets of three in the front squat, and you know, you know, three sets of three in the squat snatch. So sometimes articles can be a little bit. And then, oh, no, it's not silly. It's, it's all good. Okay, so we got a couple of good questions here. Uh, okay, so a couple of good questions here. First, 
Okay, so the first question I'm at, just hold off on the question just a little bit. I just got a ton of them. Um, first off, how does this 10,000 swing challenge compare to the others? Well, uh, I'll say this. Uh, getting up, so I get up now an hour earlier than I have so I can get my work done so I can be online at 7 uh, my time with you guys. Um, what I have noticed is from the other in the past, um, I, I feel like this one has done the most for my body composition. Uh, not, not that I've lost weight or anything, but I just, I just feel like, like last year, you know, last year I lost 36 pounds uh, throughout the year to get down from this weightlifting meet, and uh, this year I have to lose some weight to get down, but it's nothing like it. But I, I w what I did last year, as I did the 10,000 swing challenge, and the momentum of that really carried over for a long time. This year I feel like I have even more momentum, so we'll see. Do I ever train? I asked not for any more questions for a minute, but do I ever train single bell front squat? I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like the exercise. But don't ask a hundred questions. I don't like the exercise, so we're done. I like the goblet squat. I like the double kettlebell front squat. I like the overhead squat. I like the front squat. Those are the squats I like. I don't want to defend it anymore. Those are the squats I like. I've been squatting since 1965. If if you'd like to spend 57 years with me talking about squats, at the end of those 57 years, you'll probably understand why I don't like every kind of squat. What happens sometimes is that I'll answer a question. It's on my, it's on the Dan John Q&A. Do you like Hindu push-ups? No, I don't. Why? They hurt my shoulders. Why? I don't know. I, I threw the discus for 41 years. 15,000 times a year. Maybe that's the, I don't know. I don't like them. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we also had another question about uh, uh, we had another question about uh, uh, how confusing my articles get. When, so what happens is So I'll write a book or an article, and then someone will translate it into another language, Chinese in this case. And then uh, when the person's trying to understand the article, they're looking at a translation of the word uh, goblet squat. And uh, God only knows what that translates. And then you translate that out of Chinese back to English or back into a you know, another one of my resources, and you might not find that. <laughs> there might be great confusion. But it doesn't matter. I mean, listen. Uh, how many of you, uh, Instagrammers, how many of you, let me know with a, just say I have. How many of you have done the 10,000 swing challenge? Give me an I have if you have, please. Uh, what you'll find is, you know, at the end of the, at the end of the 10,000 swing challenge, the bulk of the stupid questions you ask are answered by the doing. Uh, I had to stop listening to this uh, Brain FM, uh, this lady who's the meditator. She, keeps, she kept saying this cliche that I just got sick of. 
stop being a human being and become a human. No, check that. Stop being a human doing and become a human being. Oh, God, you know. You only hear that a few times. But it, it is true, though. In the doing, most questions are answer, answered. You know, like when I tell people about how I think a body weight snatch changes everything. Body weight Olympic snatch. And then, of course, the response is, well, how, why does it change everything? Well, I'll say, wow, you didn't notice the same things? Oh, I don't, I've never done one. Well, then, if you've never seen a sunset, it's going to be real hard for me to describe a desert sunset to you, you know. Okay, so what we got? Okay, so right now we have, let's see, uh, second attempt uh, for uh, Maverick and Nicano. I planned to try the first time at the end of the four. Okay, 40 days easy to spend first, good. Okay, so we've only gotten, what, one person, uh, uh, only one person's completed it, at least from the information I'm getting here. And so, uh, so the person who both finished it will have a much different conversation. Um, it's like when you talk to somebody who snatched body weight. It's, you know, I can remember being in this adult uh, football league, and this one defensive back would always bitch to the referees that I was. Um, <laughs> he would always bitch to the referee that I was pass interfering him. Get, I was the receiver, and I was pass interfering with him. And the official said, well, he's not doing anything illegal. You're just bouncing off of him. Well, what was happening is, you know, he was, I'm sure he was a real good high school, you know, PE, physical education player. Um, but he wasn't never a Division One athlete or international level. So when he would go to hit me, I would just, you know, I could not only snatch him, I could probably snatch him and two or three of his friends. And so when we would, when, if we would hand fight, you know, I would, I would rip him like this and he would, cause I could snatch him over my, over my head. Well, once you've done that, you understand if you're a wrestler and you know, you can pick your opponent up and throw him over the head, that changes the thing. So somebody just asked, some guy named Michael asked if I thought that free weights were good enough for building muscle. Versus what, I guess would be the question. Have you ever been, have you ever seen Pump and Iron? Arnold got pretty good sized. I mean, certainly, I don't know why I brought up Arnold. You know, he's, you know, if this is 2022, his best years were 75, 76, probably. But, yeah. Hey, yeah, let's get, ah, he's okay. Don't, if I, yeah, you shouldn't be there. Getting back to that question about this this year versus past, one thing I did in the past that I'm not going to probably do this year is I used to end up on the last couple of days doing 10 sets of 50. I just don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I just, it's... I mean, it's a good, I always liked it. Certainly makes this workout go faster, but man. So the big change this year is I think the COVID 
having COVID, uh, uh, having been on that being on that strict diet the first two weeks, I think both of them hit into what we used to call recovery ability. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Rangers. Good to, Rangers was thanking me for answering all the questions and helping out. Um, I used to like that term a lot better, recovery ability. So it was, a, it was a little bit, it was, you threw in two words together, but the idea was um, we, we turn recovery into, uh, we were attempting to turn recovery into something a little bit quantifiable. I mean, uh, so, you know, if you have a really super hard workout, uh, you empty the cup. And, and if, you, uh, if you decide to write the end of that super hard workout to, you know, go do something else on top of it. Uh, the question was, well, where is that coming from? And so one of the things we would say is, well, you know, you always have reserves, but I never thought it was a good idea to touch, t touch those reserves because those reserves uh, are going to put you right into that long-term fight or flight. You know, when my brothers would come home from Vietnam, uh, I, they, obviously they were tapped out. They lost so much weight. They looked terrible. Um, and, you know, they would start, especially when they were out of the Army or Marine Corps, they would come home and, you know, go back to school and, you know, try to get back into shape. And But you could see that the one-year Vietnam deployment took a while to recover from. Well, there was emotional issues, there was physical issues, there was this, that. But I also think that when you go in so deep into your reserve, your deep reserve <laughs> reserves, <laughs> uh, you, you it takes a long time to fill those back up. So I always like the word recovery ability and try to actually early early in the aughts, uh, 2003 or four, I tried a whole system of trying to quantify recovery uh, versus training with this little journal number system. Um, I have some friends who do that for diet. Uh, you know, we try to have a 10 day and every every time you have protein, it's like a one and fiber or vegetables are one way. And, you know. Sorry, I just kind of rambled off there. Sorry. All right, let's get, you know, let's stop rambling and start swimming. job. <sighs> A little slow today and I apologize. Going a little slow today. Sorry. Hey, good morning everybody. Somebody uh, noted that their gym is closed again. And all I can do is swings and push-ups. Uh, I have a whole bunch of swing push-up workouts. Two places you can go. If you got to go to danjohn.net, there's a free PDF called The Coyote Point Kettlebell Club, which is kind of fun. We show you all the exercises that we do. And there's a whole bunch of swing push-up combinations. And then on the other form, so... I have two forms. One's at forum at danjohnuniversity.com. That one's a lot more, you know, 
Boom. Well, that's a great form. But the other one is over at DaveDraper.com. And it's called the Dan John Q&A. And if you get a chance, uh, there's a sticky on there uh, called the push-up swing combos. And you'll get, I mean, a million ideas for swing push-up combos. Um, obviously, the humane burpee is the one that I think is best. Uh, because I just spend so, t so much time with something and after a while you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then uh, there's there's a whole bunch of ramp up and ramp down ones that they, they, they look good, but you're not going to like them. Yeah. Uh, the hardest workout I've ever done was uh, uh, kettlebell fevers uh, uh, combo workout, which I still, I told James I was going to beat the hell, James Priest, I was going to beat the hell out of him. So it was one swing, one gobble squat, two swings, two gobble squats, three swings, three gobble squats. You're all going to go, okay, that's fine. Well, it went up to 20, 20. So when you get done with 14 swings and 14 gobble squats, the next round is 15, 15. And when you get done with 15, 15, the next round is 16, 16. When you get done with 16, 16, well, you know where this is heading, right? So... You know, when you get up to 10, 10, 10, you've already done 55 squats and 55 swings when you get to 10, 10. Well, when you get to 11, 11, that jumps you up to 66, 66 in one round. <laughs> and then, of course, the next one is, you know, 12, and then there's 13. Oh, my God, that was a lot of work. So just be careful about mixing those. Yeah, somebody asked me how most people do the 10,000 swing challenge. Uh, originally, when I wrote it, uh, we did, uh, the, 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 the original way was two on, one off, but that just takes too long for most people. And then we did, uh, I've done it five days, Monday through Friday, and then the weekend's off. By the way, that is great, because it gives you a chance to get your grip uh, a fairly amount. It's almost 72 hours to uh, kind of come back, which is huge. Uh I do it straight through because uh, I hate it. And that's the facts, Jack. I hate it. Let's sneak up on halfway now, okay? So we're going slow today. That's a lot. Oh. Uh. Today, uh, this afternoon, I go to the mayor's office because they, uh, they're recognizing me uh, for my Lifetime Achievement Award. The city is recognizing me today, which is kind of cool, you know. Uh, I don't, it's weird, I'm just not the, for whatever reason, I, <clears throat> I don't get awarded things very often, <clears throat> I win things, uh, I remember when I was in junior college, I, I received this thing called, uh, ah, thank you so much, thank you, hey Sarge, good morning, uh, thank you, I uh, appreciate that. I got an award called the Phil Garlington Award for the 
outstanding graduating sophomore athlete. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to know this, but uh, one of the coaches at the meeting told me later on, later on, that I had the highest GPA by far, uh, 4.0, which is as high as you can go. I was an All-American, state champion, captain of a state championship team, and, uh, you know, a pretty good citizen. And uh, they still had to argue for a while over uh, some other guy who was like uh, the basketball coach's pet player. Who he, So they had to argue about it. And the, I mean, as I, I don't know what exactly what his GPA was, but I knew him pretty well. And I can guarantee his, his academics, they weren't glowing. So it's just funny. I just don't get those kind of things. So, but it makes means a lot to me. That means a lot to me to be honored like this. So thank you all. Uh, appreciate that, Herbert. Appreciate that. So it's kind of cool. Of course, uh, you know, it's got to be real, you know, because that's the way the life world works, is I have to go to the dentist first. To, I'm just going in for my, I get my, I get my teeth cleaned three times a year. Uh, it's funny. It costs $61 for me to get my, uh, for an hour having someone clean my teeth and uh, x-rays and all that other stuff. And I'm like, I get it. I know that $61, you know, $183 a year is a lot of money for some people. I understand that. But at the same time, to me, it's just like, uh, it's like changing the oil in the car. I just, yeah. So, we're halfway. Oh, hey, congratulations. Uh, uh, we have uh, someone uh, letting us know they took second in a... Uh, in the strongman competition, I, I understand I helped some with their nutritional advice. That means a lot. Congratulations. Uh, I would always suggest if you're a strongman competitor, always walk after you train. Always. Um, the the When you Olympic lift, you know, the bar comes up, you drop the weight, you release. Uh, even when you power lift, you, you squat, you, you rack it, you release. The problem, I think, with strongman is that you you hold tension longer than anybody in any, any sport I've ever seen. So I think it's really important that you go for a walk after every workout just to bleed all that excess tension off of you. Uh, you guys have a... Oh, okay, hang on. Okay, I'll come back to the fermentation question. If I forget it, let me know, but I... Uh, So, the fermentation course I took with University of Utah's uh, uh, continuing education. But I like the course and I like the instructor. But there's a company online. Uh, so you need, you know, I think they're called Bell Jars, I think. But these come with, the, the brand I bought for the lids is flat and it has like a little nipple in it, literally a nipple that allows stuff to escape uh it's upstairs i'm not gonna leave now to look for it because i'll get sidetracked and start cleaning i'll have you all watching me live ah uh, but uh it uh it just just look up <clears throat> like fermentation products or something like that but the booklet that that company, that, so here's the here's the jar, the, I think they're called bell jars or fermenting jars, okay, glass ones. They're about this big. Uh, for sauerkraut, you want bigger. You want the big ones. 
but they all come with the same exact uh, lid. But the one that has the, the, the nipple has a booklet, and I think the booklet is all you really need. What's cool about uh, making sauerkraut, uh, I use caraway seeds and cabbage. Uh, whatever cabbage you use is fine. So you shred, you, and I would finish shredding the cabbage and then shred it one more time. Uh, you'll be surprised how you'll be, <laughs> you'll have sauerkraut and they'll just be this huge, like it feels like it's a 50 foot strand uh, because they, they just, so chops, you chop it down and then you add a very little bit of salt. I mean, tiny amounts. Um, <clears throat> I mean, very small amount. Uh, certainly, you you know, you can measure it. I mean, that's what I did, but it's much less salt than you think. And you, you, it's kind of cool because you, uh, I mean, it kind of depends on how you do it. I put the salt and the caraway seeds in first. Now, your, your mileage may vary. And then your job is to take that whole head of shredded cabbage. So here's the, here's the cabbage, and here's it now shredded. And here's this little jar, and you start pushing it in there. And the weirdest thing is that this head of cabbage easily fits inside this jar. In fact, the last time I did sauerkraut, I stuck in, in a larger jar, two heads of cabbage in there. And it's, it's almost like you're, you're, it's like a magic trick. You keep going, where is this all going? And as you pound it in, uh, I have a wooden, uh, well, I don't know what you call it, but, uh, you know, I got this wooden, this little wooden thing. You, you, you just keep packing it in there. And then, so you have two heads of cabbage, and then you put this little uh, rubber nipple on top, and then you, you go like that, you squeeze it down. And then you're done. Literally, you're done. Uh, you might want to uh, stir the caraway seeds or whatever seeds you work. Dill works nicely in there. Uh, I tried it one time with mint and I was a disaster. Uh, and you just let it sit there and it makes this little sound. And then when you want to stop using it, you put on a normal lid and put it in the fridge. And it's that easy. I made it sound a lot more complicated than it is. Sorry for that long-winded uh, instruction. But uh, <clears throat> I don't want. To, I don't make my own homemade kimchi though. I, that, there's a little Korean market I go to, and the lady is very nice to me, and that's where I get mine. And anyway, she, I, I get the the jars are twelve dollars, fourteen bucks for a jar this big, with about five or six different things in there. So, I, I don't think I can work, <laughs> and it's so much better than mine. So. Well, the one thing that stops me the most with COVID is having to go blow my nose. So I'll be right back. Sorry. Another thing about the COVID is how many uh, bottles of mouthwash I've gone through in the last two weeks. I have found gargling to be really helpful, but I just can't believe how much I'm going through. It's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, uh, the self-care system. This is you here uh, the other day too, huh? Uh, yeah, uh, kimchi. One of the things I, I found last year is that the more kimchi I ate, the more it seemed to help with my body composition. Now, sure, okay, so there's, I mean, there's really almost no calories in kimchi. I mean, it's like almost a negative, and of course it does marvels for your uh, butt, uh, your gut biome. Damn it, my daughter started calling it butt biome, and now I can't not say it. Uh, many times after a workout, I try to fast until a meal, but what I'll do is I'll just eat some kimchi and the idea is, it satiates me. It's like, oh, I'm eating food, but I'm, I'm, I don't think it's tempting. So. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of it. Yeah. 
can't, I've never met someone who said, oh, I got fat eating kimchi. Yeah, the uh, question is, how am I preparing for my Olympic lifting meet? Uh, three days a week, I'm doing, uh, uh, I'm snatching, uh, Olympic snatching, working on some extra overhead squats. And then uh, also on those three days, I'm working on my overhead work. Um, because of the swing volume and because of the Omicron, I thought I'd be able to, to train and just, oh, well, I can do 10,000 swings in Olympic lift. But when you throw in the sickness, I just couldn't, I couldn't train normal. So here's what I decided to do is I'm using this as a, a work capacity general prep thing, the swings, uh, the fat loss boost to help trim my body weight down, which didn't work uh, because I was overtrained and not feeling good with the uh, Omicron. And then, uh, but after this is over, so starting uh, probably, well, probably Saturday, well, certainly next Monday for sure, uh, I'll just go back to uh, my pre-comp uh, stuff. Uh, basically, uh, after I do this, I'll just be in the gym doing snatch, clean and jerk, and I'll probably do front squats for three more workouts, but then I'll drop those out too. And uh, I said this, I thought, yesterday, but, uh, you know, just trying to, uh, 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 just I'm just trying to hone my workout. Oh, by the way, if you're a Pat Flinner, you should be done by now. You've done your 300. And for those of you who have Maytag washer and dryers, you probably just heard that my washer just finished. Plays a little happy little sound song when it's over. Uh, today, usually I do my laundry on Monday and Tuesdays, but uh, we we have a we have a baby in the house, so that changes laundry <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Uh, good questions this morning. I, I appreciate this. I feel like I missed a few because so many came in at once. Uh, yeah, um, getting back on that prep, uh, I keep the hooper bar over there in the corner to get some extra. If I want to practice my overhead squat, I can, I can do it down here. You know, doing all the swings. As much as swings, if I do 100 swings a day, I think it loosens up my hips. If I do 500 swings a day, I, it, I wouldn't say it tightens me up, but it, it, my body responds by, you know, not being as greased up. So I have to make sure I do a good deal for overhead squats in here. 6 a.m. Good morning, Michael. Uh, so, yeah, our California friends at 6 a.m. when I start, and of course, uh, you know, kind of depends on where you are in the world. Uh, I was thinking yesterday about how much I miss traveling. Um, this year, I got a chance to go back to England to teach at St. Mary's, but because of COVID, it literally wasn't. I mean, I, I when I say it's fun, I don't, don't, don't think it's, I wouldn't say like, teaching in the college is fun. I, it is fun. Okay, it's fun because it's fun, but I just love, it's like being at discus camp for me in a way. It's like being around people. When I'm teaching strength and conditioning for weeks at a time, being around people who, you know, 
appreciate strength and conditioning, understand what I'm talking about, you know, it's, it's nice, you know, it's, it's, yeah, this year we had some fun, we played this weird game uh, <laughs> that we kind of invented on the spot, just me and the students, and it was just so fun, uh, I think this year I actually be able to participate more and more in the, uh, some of the events as my, my legs get, I mean, honestly, they feel better by the year. Um, so we're having real problems with inversion in, the, in, uh, in Utah uh, on the Wasatch Front this weekend, this week. But uh, don't worry, my neighbor likes to start his truck and warm it up for 45 minutes. Because, you know, uh, my neighbor also has a boat. And since he's lived here, I've never seen him once use said boat. I don't know why people pour all that money into boats and RVs and all this stuff and then never use it. I just, it just stuns me. I have to be careful. That was a judgmental thing. I apologize. Having said that, uh, all that, all that money all that space inside your head. Uh, I looked inside his boat a couple of weeks ago and it's just filled with uh, um, fast food cups and garbage. Uh, does he use it as a garbage bin? And, uh, of course you come to my house and you see kettle, literally kettlebells littered in every corner, barba. Just a kettlebell. <coughs> in this room there's a kettlebell here, a kettlebell there, a lifting bar over there, and this is the family room so you can only imagine what this rest of the place looks like so maybe before I start casting stones maybe I should shut up okay so I'm gonna to try to get to 400 to right now okay a little slow today I apologize Oh, it's going slow today. I apologize. Oof. I was going to tell you something else. My grandson is howling upstairs. You can hear him. He's discovered his voice and he likes to hear it. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I like to declutter so much. Uh, in the last few months, I mean, I've made a very, very, very serious decluttering. And it's funny because when you declutter, not only do you find stuff, there's also stuff you'll find sometimes be like, why did I keep this? And then the next to it will be something that you're like, huh. Uh, this should be, you know, honored somehow. This should be visible to everybody. And I guess, you know, we're talking this with Pat, and Pat moved into his place. And in his basement, he's got seven boxes that he's not opened since he's lived there, and it's, I think, it's two years now. Well, what the declutter specialists tell you is, if you haven't opened a box in two years, get rid of it. Now, I have to be careful because, you know, I mean, I've got boxes with, you know, different things I've won and stuff, but the truth is, Unless you want to put it up here, like in a, this is my, this is the work I do with uh, the various military forces of the world. But and the reason I have this little honor is because so many of the people I worked with have died. 
and I just thought, you know, I got to make sure I keep them, and you know, you know, keep them, and, you know, and, yeah. and some of them are just kind of cool. I mean, yeah, actually, I, yeah, it's, yeah, some of them are. Some of them have some sad stories. So either you put them out or you throw them out. You know, I, I got my deal with people. All right, uh, we're going to run out of time here pretty soon with my uh, Instagram friends. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, we're on the downhill slope. We'll be done pretty soon. <clears throat> I got uh, maybe two, maybe three more rounds to go. Okay. I guess there'll be three more. <clears throat> Once I start coughing, it makes it hard to swing. Uh, so maybe get two more rounds there. Well. Hi, Vicky. How are you? Hi, seriously. Yes, so delightful. I miss you guys so much. Uh, she's she's got to be. Three, four? Three, three, four, four this year? Huh. The nice thing, uh, gentle listeners here, and even here, is that I know a lot of the people who post here. Uh, it's kind of cool. So, the Craddock's from Galway, Ireland. Uh, if you ever decide that you, you need any kind of uh, Physio help, or training help, and go away. Look up Adrian Craddock and his sister Ema. Wonderful people. God, the people of the West in Ireland are just, they're just, they're just so, it's just an amazing place. Yeah, true. Wonderful people. Beautiful place. Uh, don't know why it's not more of a tourist destination. Once you've dived into the waters of Black Rock, it's so warm. Right? At Craddock Performance. Thank you. We miss you too. Uh, got some stuff I got to share with you some other time, but not here, okay? Uh, yeah, I tell you, there's nothing like uh, leaping into the Black Rock out there in Galway Bay, swimming around for a few hours. Uh, with the, uh, of course, anyone who's ever been in the Galway Bay knows I'm lying. Yeah, someone's talking about issues with putting suitcases are fine, but putting the weight overhead. Yeah, that's that. You probably want to get someone to look at that. There's probably <clears throat> it might be some very simple issue you might want to work with. Might help that. Okay, let's get a couple rounds and then uh, we'll move on to my day. <laughs> okay. <coughs> One more round, and we'll be called a day. So today puts us over a little over 8,000. Yeah, and uh, I'll have to figure out what to do about that missing day. Uh, 
took a course yesterday on uh, some, some, uh, some things about. Hi, good morning, but uh, almost finished. And it was interesting because, you know, I've read a lot of the works about relationships and stuff. But it was kind of cool to. Uh, there's a word that's used a lot called boundaries, and I, I struggle with the idea. I'm not, I mean, I'm not stupid. I just, it's one thing to study something academically, and then another thing to, to try to apply it, you know, to day to day and stuff. But uh, Paul Lysinga uh, recommended a book called Bumpers to me, and it's funny because reading Bumpers made me understand boundaries. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do with my business is put in a few more bumpers, you know, like I'm, I'm not just going to say, yeah, you know, for a while there, I was, I wasn't getting big. In fact, most of the time I got stiffed, I would do these, uh, I'm not supposed to say the name without saying trademark, but it's a, a training method that supposedly started in 1974. And, uh, they, they always wear shirts that say I'm elite on them. Well, I would go to their boxes and do these workshops with people who were experts at everything. <laughs> My favorite, but I get stiffed and we get paid, and so I, I don't take you know that's that's now a, a bumper or a boundary for me. I'm not going to do work at those places because I'm getting tired of being stiffed. You know, <laughs> literally not paying me. And then when you email them back, it's like, oh yeah, we're closed. Yeah, we closed. Um, my favorite story about the workout that shall not be named, when I went to that one facility and their expert on Olympic lifting was a man who snatched 85 pounds. I didn't say 85 kilos, I said 85 pounds. So their expert snatched one, uh, 40 kilos. I snatched 142.5. And he was teaching them all the stuff that was just, it might be true. If you're snatching PVC pipes and broomsticks, he, he's a much better instructor than I ever be. But if you're actually snatching weights, you might want to... Oh, meow. Saucer of milk, table one, please. Huh? Huh? <sighs> <clears throat> okay, this will be the last set. So after this, I'll say my goodbyes to you. And if you guys have any more questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll, we'll call it a day. Um, I know I started a little late today, and I know today's workout took longer. I'm tired, uh, sore. Uh, I thought I had this this COVID behind me, and I do, but I'm still having those, you know, 12-hour, 13-hour nights of sleep, So, which is great, by the way. It's, uh, you know, it's... it's a sign that something else is going on. <clears throat> Once again, uh, whenever I move a weight with just one hand, you'll notice almost universally I have the other arm supporting to uh, take care of my lower back. You don't have to do anything I do. But if you hurt your lower back moving a bell, then just remember that in the future. Okay, this will be it. Well, that does it again. Day, day 17 done. And uh, thank you again for watching. Remember, if you have questions, podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I'm happy to answer any and all of your questions there. Uh, and remember, uh, danjohnuniversity.com. Uh, we got that great forum. We've got all those downloads, literally 
thousands of pages of, of free books, uh, lots and lots and lots of articles, but the best part's the workout generator and the forum. So just remember that for your, uh, the, the workout generator is the best of what I know, but done with artificial intelligence. So you can keep asking it questions and it keeps <laughs> answering it without getting <laughs> crouchy. So thanks so much for watching. Remember now, uh, until next time, let's all keep on lifting and learning.